Okay, so many people are going to get this simple math question wrong, even if they use a calculator. Now, you might be saying, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, if I had a calculator, there's like a 100% chance that I'll get the right answer. Well, don't be so sure about that, but uh, there's only one way to find out, and that is for you to try the problem, which is the following. Okay, so we have 4 divided by 8 divided by 2 times 4. But uh, we do have a multiple choice question here, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 1, B is 1 fourth, C is 1 16th, and D is 4. All right, now put your answer into the comment section, and I'm going to show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to fully solve this problem step by step and really emphasize why you have to understand basic math, even if you have a calculator. I'm talking about the concepts and principles of basic math to get the right solution. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so here again is the problem. Now, I'm gonna encourage uh, you out there to try to do this without a calculator. But if you're like, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I am going to double check my work with a calculator. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the correct solution because it is going to shock a lot of you. All right, so the correct answer is not one. All right, now a lot of you are probably pretty upset. You're like, hey, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? I plugged this into my calculator and I got one. Well, there is a reason why this is not correct. All right, the correct answer actually is 1 16th, which of course is option C. All right, now if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus. And if you got a uh, one as your answer, well, there is an explanation why this is not correct. And you might be saying, wait a minute, I used my calculator, I got one. Well, you didn't use your calculator correctly. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get into this right now. And uh, actually, if you made an error, okay, don't feel bad because this is gonna be an exciting opportunity to understand how to communicate with your calculator. Now, just because you have a calculator doesn't mean that you're gonna get any problem uh, correct that you type into your calculator because you have to know how to type in problems correctly into your calculator, right? So I'm gonna go explain all this in just one second. But uh, the first thing I want to kind of notice here or point out is that we do have a math question and it's multiple choice. So for those of you that still have to take math tests and exams, and if you come across a problem and you don't know what to do, what should you do? Well, just take a guess. You have a one out of four chance. Now, some of you might be uh, thinking, well, I didn't really know what to do, but maybe this four cross cancels with that four. Then here I have eight divided by two, which is four. Well, that is an outstanding guess. Unfortunately, it is wrong. But again, you know, never leave a math question blank. But uh, the thing to do here is to understand the math. Now, I did say you can use a calculator, and a lot of you came up with the answer of one. Now, why is this wrong? Well, I'm gonna explain that in just one second, but uh, here is our problem. And if you haven't tried this on your calculator, let's go ahead and see how well you understand how to use your calculator to solve a basic arithmetic problem. Okay, so go ahead and type this into your calculator and let's see what number comes out. Okay, so most of you probably did this. You're like, all right, well, four divided by eight divided by uh, two times four. So you typed in a four and then divided by eight. And then right here we have a division symbol divided by two times four. Okay, so when you hit enter, you're gonna come up with the answer of one. Now, again, a lot of you are like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I still don't know what's going on here because uh, one is what comes up in my calculator and you just showed me how to type this in. Well, this problem right here is not this problem, okay? All right, so I'm gonna, of course, explain this all in just one second. But what we need to do here is review something called the order of operations, right? And I'll get back to this calculator business in just one second because when you have a math problem, 
and you have uh, more than one math operation. Now, what is a mathematical operator or a math operation? It's what you can do with numbers. So what can we do with numbers? Well, we can add, subtract, multiply, divide, and even take powers and some other things. So you gotta understand something called the order of operations. Now, before I get into uh, the order of operations, this is what hopefully some of you came up with when you type this into uh, your calculator. Now, if you came up with 0 0.0625, that is correct, right? So all of this, somehow, uh, you should have came up with this decimal, which is equivalent to the fraction 1 16th, which, of course, is the correct answer. Okay, so I'm going to explain all of this in just one second, but first, we need to review the correct order of operations. So as I indicated, when you have a math problem, more than one uh, mathematical operation. So if I have like 10 plus three, well, there's only one thing to do here, right? So that's just to add these numbers. But if I have 10 plus three divided by seven, well, now I have a choice on whether I should do addition first or division first, right? And depending on the order you take, you're gonna come up with different uh, answers, right? So of course, only one uh, answer is correct. And that answer is the uh, approach where you follow the correct order of operations. So you got to understand this little saying right here called PEMDAS. Now I'm going to give you a little mnemonic, a little memory aid before I explain these letters. And it goes like this. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. One more time. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, I don't know what Aunt Sally did, but, uh, you know, we thank her for her uh, contributions to mathematics. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. So what is P? Now, this is a checklist that uh, goes from left to right. Now, if your math problem has any of these things right here, you're going to do this. You're going to do these operations in this order. Okay, so the first thing is P. So P stands for parentheses. So if you see some parentheses in your math problem, uh, or brackets like this, or these type of squiggly brackets, this is what you're going to do first. This is called grouping symbols. Now, if you come across a math problem where you have parentheses and then brackets and then maybe some other brackets like this, well, the way this works is you're going to go to the innermost parentheses and do that and then kind of work your way out. Okay, so that's what the P stands for in PEMDAS. Okay, now the next thing is E. Now this stands for exponents, but you can think of this as powers. So if you have any powers in your problem, you're gonna do this next. So when you have a power like two to the third power, this means take two and multiply it by itself three times, right? So this is two times two times two, which of course is eight. But this little number up here is called the exponent part of the power. And this big number down here is called the base. The entire thing is a power, all right? So when you, um, when we're talking about PEMDAS, E stands for exponents, but again, you can think of this as powers. Now, sometimes you won't have a power situation in your problem, no big deal. You just kind of move on to the next step. Okay, so what is the next step? Well, let me go ahead and first tell you what these letters stand for. So M stands for multiplication. D stands for division, A stands for addition, and S stands for subtraction. Now, what I'm going to show you is one of the most confused parts of basic math, right? I would have to say, uh, in terms of all the testing quizzes I've uh, graded over many decades, you know, I'm talking like hundreds of thousands of, you know, I'm probably not exaggerating, actually, when I think about it. You know, I've just seen tons and tons and tons and tons of, of uh, students work and they make this, or uh, students tend to make this mistake over and over again, right? Now, there's a couple of reasons why they do. I think it's not stressed well enough in math textbooks. And uh, for me, as a math teacher, I really try to stress it. But, you know, sometimes people get distracted and they don't pay attention to this little detail of the order of operations. So you might uh, kind of think to yourself, well, the next thing to do is multiplication here because we do have a checklist that goes from left to right. Now I'm gonna give you a quick pop quiz here. So we have 10 divided by two times five. Okay, now without using your calculator, what is the right answer? 10 divided by two times five. So some of you are gonna say, all right, Mr. Two Math Man, uh, I'm gonna follow the checklist. I don't have any parentheses, I don't have any powers, so I'm gonna do multiplication. So I'm gonna do two times five right here. So now I have 10 divided by two times five is 10. So the answer is one. Well, unfortunately, this is wrong, right? The answer is not one. 
So a lot of you are probably getting more frustrated. They're like, hey, what's going on here, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Well, let me show you right now. Okay, so the way PEMDAS actually works is it's a group. You're going to do multiplication or division, whatever you see first from left to right. So let me go ahead and write this problem again. We have 10 divided by 2 times 5. So what do we see first from left to right? We see division. All right, so we have to do this first. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. So that is the correct answer. And if you don't believe me, go ahead and put that into your calculator, and you're going to see that the answer is 25. Oftentimes when I do these videos on the order of operations, I get uh, some people that say, yeah, you're not right. You're not, you know, you know, I'm just telling you right now, PEMDAS is one of these phrases that are pretty much taught in most math textbooks or some sort of variation of it. And if you don't believe me, just go ahead and type this into your calculator. Your calculator is going to basically reaffirm uh, the correct order of operations, which, of course, is what I am telling you. OK, so let's talk about um, A and S. Of course, that is addition and subtraction. And it works the same way as multiplication and division. It is a group. All right, so we have to really understand uh, the order of operations here. But there is something a little bit sneaky about this P step, this parentheses right here, that is going to impact this problem. OK, so here it is. OK, so here's our problem. We have 4 divided by 8 divided by 2 times 4. Well, anytime you have a fraction situation, this is a fraction, okay? The fraction bar, this right here, this division bar, separates the numerator, which is the top part of the fraction, from the denominator, which is the bottom part of the fraction. So effectively, okay, you want to think of the fraction bar as a grouping symbol, okay? In other words, this is one group and this is another group. And to be very clear about this, it's not a bad idea to put parentheses around the numerator and the denominator. Now, a problem like this, you're not going to see the parentheses, but it's kind of understood that you um, realize that the fraction bar separates this uh, fraction into effectively two separate problems. Okay, And this is going to have implications when you type this into uh, your calculator. So really, this problem that we're trying to figure out, 4 divided by 8, divided by 2 times 4 is this problem right here. It's parentheses. This group, 4 divided by 8, divided by, we got to get the answer here, divided by 2 times 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and uh, actually do the arithmetic right now. So 4 divided by 8 is what? Well, that's 4 divided by 8, and we can reduce that down to the fraction 1 half. All right, so we got 1 half as our numerator, and 2 times 4 is what? Well, that is 8. Now, when you're thinking about PEMDAS, right, you're like, hey, come on, Steve, math, man, let's put that PEMDAS back up there and think about this. So our first step is P, parentheses. And actually, you have like three parentheses here, right? We have this uh, parenthesis, this fraction bar is effectively a grouping symbol, but we have uh, the numerator and the denominator. Now, I put these parentheses in, but uh, what you want to do is even if they're not there, you got to do uh, these steps first, right? This is a group and this is a group, and we just kind of do these individually as their own little separate problems. Okay, so we got 4 divided by 8, again, is the fraction 1 half over uh, 2 times 4, which of course is 8. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take the next step and solve this simple math problem. But uh, before we do, we're going to take this step, and that is uh, have you uh, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, I definitely need your help to continue to grow on YouTube. And uh, my goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable and interesting way. But as a math teacher, I'm happiest when I'm uh, able to reach as many people as possible. And I can't do that unless I get your support. And the best way you can support this channel is to literally just hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well. I pretty much post at least one video per day. And my channel focuses on basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. And if you uh, like my teaching style and you really want to learn math from me, check out my full main math courses. You'll find links to those in the description of this video. And kind of what we're talking about here is basic arithm arithmetic. You may want to check out either my pre-algebra course or my math foundations course or maybe my math skills rebuilder course. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, finish this problem up. 
So we have what we call a complex fraction, which is a fraction being divided by a number. Or when you have a fraction and the numerator or the denominator uh, or both, one of these is a fraction. This is called a complex fraction. So we have to correctly interpret what's going on here, right? So we have one half divided by eight, all right? So one half divided by divided by eight is what? Well, it's one half divided by eight, but let's write it this way, okay? One half divided by eight. Now, of course, you have to understand a thing or two about fractions to get the right answer, but this is not that difficult. So one half divided by eight, well, we divide fractions in the following manner, okay? What we do is change the problem from division to multiplication by flipping this number, the number to the right of the division symbol upside down. So here we have eight, but uh, you can kind of think of this as eight over one. So if I flip it upside down, I get one over eight. Okay, so uh, one half divided by eight is equal to, or is the same as one half times one eighth. And to multiply two fractions is super simple. All we have to do is multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So one times one is one, two times uh, eight is 16. So the correct answer is 1 16th. All right, so hopefully you understand uh, kind of the principles on why the answer is 1 16th. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk about the calculator right now. Okay, so if you want to uh, you know, use your calculator to get the right answer, you have to notice that you have a fraction. So you gotta be like, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I got a group here and I got a group here. How can I make this uh, super explicit in my calculator? Well, you have to put parentheses around the numerator and the denominator, right? That's not um, optional, okay? Because if you don't put this in, you're gonna do four divided by eight divided by two times four, the answer is going to be one, okay? But this right here, the way you typed it in, is not this problem, okay? This problem in your calculator is parentheses, four divided by eight divided by parentheses, two times four, right? So just because you have a calculator, if you don't know how to correctly use it, you're not gonna get the right answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, plug this in. If you have your calculator, you're gonna get point uh, 0 0.0625, which is equivalent to the fraction 1 16th. Now, if you look here, right, let's just kind of take this away and write the problem this way without a calculator. So let's just think about the order of operations, right? So there's the impact of parentheses. So this problem without parentheses, let's put PEMDAS up here real quick. So PEMDAS. So the first thing is, uh, do we have any parentheses, right? There's no parentheses here, right? As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and get rid of the correct answer. And let's just do this problem, which again is different from the actual problem that we're doing. So is there any parentheses in this problem? No. Is there any exponents, any powers? No. Do we have multiplication and division? Yes, we do, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do whatever we see first from left to right. So we're gonna do this, four divided by eight, which is what? Well, four divided by eight, again, is one half. So we have one half divided by two times four. Okay, so that's our first step. Okay, so back to PEMDAS, right? So do we have any more multiplication and division? Yes, we do. What do we see first from left to right? We see division, okay? So we have to do one half divided by two, which is the same thing as one half times one half, which of course is one fourth. So now we have one fourth times four, and one fourth times four, or four over one, is one, all right? So our calculator is calculating the correct answer to this problem, okay? That's not the issue. The issue is we need to understand we're dealing with a fraction and the numerator and denominators are groups. Okay, so hopefully a lot of you out there actually learned something. That's the whole purpose of these videos. And never feel bad if you get a math problem wrong. It's just an opportunity to improve your math skills. But uh, if you really want to learn math, you got to practice this stuff. So once you understand you know, the principles and concepts to really strengthen that skill, you got to practice, practice, practice. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.